it's quite common to want to incorporate work breakdown structure codes into the project plan. So that's what we'll look at in this video. But you may or may not know that your project's work breakdown structure, or WBS, is a hierarchical decomposition of the work to be done. <laughs> so it shows the breakdown of the project into parts. And every item should have a unique identifier. And that's where the idea of WBS codes come in. So you can see that each phase in my project is numbered at the top level here. And then we've got multi-level numbering to indicate the subtasks. And what you see here would be a very typical way of numbering your tasks. And I think you can guess that I'm going to show you that project can take care of this numbering for you. So let's have a look. If you just want to simply number your tasks according to a straightforward multi-level numbering system, then you might find, if you go to the Gantt Chart Tools Format ribbon tab, you might find that the Outline Number option over on the right-hand side is enough. So look at what that's done. It's, it's literally put that exact numbering system that we saw on the whiteboard a second ago, so 1, 1.1, 1 .1, etc. And if I were to, for example, to insert a task, then sure enough, it incorporates the numbering system on the new task. Or if I were to indent a task, then again, it's updated that with the multi-level numbering. Now look what happens if I move a task. So I'm just going to move this scope complete task up towards the, the top of this little section. And you can see that has updated the numbering to 1.2 because it's now second in the list of this section. And you might think, well, surely that's exactly what we want, isn't it? Hmm, well, quite possibly not. Now, the reason for this is that it's often the case that once a task has got a WBS code, you do not want that code to change, as you may have already used it in references to other things, either inside this project or, or outside of the project. So for that reason, you might not find this outline number option sufficient for your needs. So I'm going to use the drop down arrow next to the undo button to undo all of those changes I made. And we'll set up proper WBS codes this time. So take yourself to the project ribbon tab and that's where you'll find the WBS button. Choose that and then choose the option to define code. And we will work through quite a few different examples from this dialog box. But first of all, we've got here the project code prefix. So let's do an example to see what that looks like and what that will do. It'll put a little prefix in front of every code in your WBS coding structure. So let's imagine that I'm going to add in SDP for Software Development Plan, which is the name of this particular project. And then I need to indicate how I want the different levels of my numbering to look. And you can see you've got lots of options, which we will explore. But I'm just going to choose ordered numbers. And I don't need to specify all the other levels as well. It'll just automatically choose ordered numbers if I don't choose anything else. You can also see down towards the bottom generate a new code for each new task. Well, yes, I like that option. And also verify the uniqueness of new codes. Now we'll see both of these options in action as we progress through uh, these examples. So let me just click OK. And then you think, ah, oh, well, <clears throat> where are they? <laughs> where are those WBS codes that we have just defined? Well, we need to turn on the WBS codes column. So just right click up on one of the column headings and choose insert column. That will automatically pop down the list of available column types. So just start typing WBS and you'll be able to switch on that column. And let me just adjust the width of that so it doesn't take up quite so much space. Now, what you can see, it has done the 1 and the 1.1 and the 1.2, but do you remember that prefix that we set for SDP, for Software Development Plan? Well, that's how it looks. So that's where that came in. And then you think, mm, I think that looks a bit cluttered. Don't like the prefix. I mean, it can be useful, but in my example, it looks a bit cluttered. So let's go back into that WBS dialog box and just delete that prefix and click OK. And you saw my numbering just update immediately. If yours doesn't change immediately, then you might have to go back to the WBS button and choose the option to renumber. But anyway, you can see that prefix has now gone. Let's just see how these codes work, though. So let's imagine I'm going to put in another new task. So let me just insert a new task above this one. And maybe this is going to be define external resources. Now, did you notice it did number it automatically, which is what we saw in that dialog box when we defined the codes. But look, it's numbered it as 1.6 because it didn't want to have to renumber the scope complete task. That may or may not be what we want, but worthy of note. And let's imagine now I want to indent both of these two tasks to make them subtasks. And as you might hope, the multi-level numbering has kicked in there. But then I change my mind and outdent them again. But look at what's happened here. The numbering seems to have gone a bit loopy. It's, it's given brand new numbers to those. And if I move a task, then I move that up to here, then... As we discussed, normally that might well be what you want because we didn't want it to renumber. 
But look at this section. This is now a bit of a mess because I've been indenting and outdenting tasks and adding new tasks and moving them around. Sometimes you do want the numbers to stay fixed and not changed, but other times you will want to tidy up and renumber either the whole project or just a particular section. So if you select the tasks you want to renumber, back to the project ribbon tab, back to WBS and choose renumber, and there you've got the option to renumber the codes for just the selected tasks. And when I click OK to that, you can see, phew, it's sorted out and tidied up all of my numbering again. Let's do a slightly more elaborate example this time. So back up to that define code dialog box. And this time I'm going to specify that level two, I also want to be ordered numbers, but I want the separator to be, oh, let's choose these, let's choose the forward slash. And I want the third level to be letters. Let's choose lowercase letters. Now, when I click OK to that, I'm just going to scroll down to a little bit further down in my project where I do have a third level. And that's where you can see that new format that I defined with the slash and the, and the letter. And one more example back into that same dialog box. I'm going to change the level one to this time characters unordered. Now we'll see how this works, but I this time want to specify a length and I'm going to specify that we can only have three characters. You can see the code preview building up there, but it'll make more sense when we actually apply it. When I click OK to that, what this means is in this first level here, I can type in a three character code for that section. So I'm going to call it SCP short for scope. And when I press enter, can you see that that is used instead of the, the top level of number one? And if I go into this next one and choose REQ for require, Requirements. That's done that. And you'll notice if I, for some reason, in this third one also type in REQ when I hit enter, well, it says that's not unique. Do you remember that other checkbox in the dialog box that says check those codes are going to be unique? So, ah, oh, I had a bit of a silly moment there, got that wrong. So instead, that should be DES for design. So that might be a useful option if you want your codes to indicate the phase that they're in, for example. So, plenty of potential to customize your WBS codes. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.